I am Sandra Smith. I am now 32 years old and about three springs ago wedded my favorite husband, Mike. I have a wonderful relationship with Michael and we're also very close to his sister, Emily. We get along like sisters. With Daniel, who would eventually marry Emily. In fact, Michael and I have been together for 10 years before getting married, so we are just like parents to Emily. We always wanted so earnestly and sincerely for her to grow up well, even as we watched over her. Given this background, when Emily reached the important milestone of receiving a marriage proposal from her fiancé, she wanted to introduce him to us, her surrogate parents. I would like to introduce my fiancé to you both, she shared her feelings with us. That moment was very sentimental for us as a couple because we could see Emily, who we have cared for like our own daughter, finding her life partner and striving for a happy future. It was a joyful moment for both me and my husband, Michael, and our hearts were filled with happiness. Finally, the promised day arrived. Emily brought Daniel, the life partner she chose, to meet us. Daniel seemed to be around my age, maybe around 32. He was precisely five years older than Emily, which made me intuitively realize that she prefers older men. I discreetly observed him and was somewhat impressed by his solid features and calm demeanor. However, I couldn't help but notice that Daniel was stealing glances at me repeatedly. Did he have something he wanted to say to me? Was there something about me that concerned him? Or was it just a coincidence? A question mark floated in my mind. I quickly checked my clothing and hairstyle for any issues but found nothing amiss. Perhaps realizing that staring at me was impolite, Daniel quickly averted his eyes. In the end, we couldn't understand why he was observing me so closely, but Michael and I decided not to worry about it and proceeded to make introductions and engage in conversation with Emily and Daniel, who were seated across the table from us. Please take good care of my younger sister was a classic phrase exchanged and Michael responded with a smile on his face. Emily, I'm entrusting you to him. Saying this, he entrusted Emily's future happiness to Daniel. This created a harmonious atmosphere at the gathering, easing the initial tension of our first meeting. There was a moment when Michael asked Daniel a question that he was curious about. Daniel, may I ask where you work? I was very interested in his answer and listened attentively. Daniel answered proudly, puffing out his chest. You might have heard of it. I work at Tea Company, which is growing very rapidly right now. Tea Company? Is that a famous game development company? I asked. Yes, that's right. Actually, I changed jobs to work there last year, but I didn't quit my previous job because I disliked it. Tea Company directly scouted me because they highly valued my skills, so this is like a promotion. Don't worry, I didn't start as a regular employee, Daniel explained. Hearing this astonishing story, both Michael and I were astounded. I involuntarily opened my eyes wide, and our eyes met. Seeing our surprised reactions, Daniel seemed to be convinced that his story had the intended effect and he continued to speak with even more pride. That's why I would like you to trust me completely with Emily. I'm rapidly climbing the career ladder at TE Company, and I am confident that I am progressing faster than most. Even though I started as a regular employee, my salary will quickly increase, and my position in the company will rapidly improve, so please rest assured. Hearing his words, I was so surprised that I was at a loss for words. Tea Company is very famous, and I am well aware of it. Michael must also be aware of Tea Company. However, he doesn't work there, so he might not know the detailed insider information. I think both Emily and Michael are aware that Tea Company has a great reputation in the industry. However, it seemed like neither of them had imagined that her fiancé, Daniel, would quickly ascend the corporate ladder at TE Company after joining. 
I myself had not imagined that such a development was actually happening. There were parts of Daniel's story that felt somewhat uncomfortable to me, but I decided to accept his story without doubt as he talked about being headhunted by Dia Company and successfully climbing the career ladder at an astonishing pace. As our conversation shifted from company topics, I eagerly asked them about their first meeting and how they came to know each other. According to their response, they met through a mutual friend. Daniel was searching for a life partner, but felt resistant to attending matchmaking events. Thus, he met Emily through a trusted friend. Emily was interested in having a boyfriend, but wasn't actively seeking. She decided to meet Daniel upon a friend's invitation. Actually, I am really drawn to how Daniel brings smiles to my face. His slightly clumsy yet of adorable side also really captures my heart, Emily shared. As they shared their feelings in front of us, it felt as sweet as sugar despite Daniel, and I'm not eating anything sweet. Their close bond and deep affection for each other were very clear. However, there was one thing that bothered me. As they were leaving our house, Daniel and I decided to see them off at the front door, and that's when Daniel started talking to Emily about bringing rice and other gifts. Meanwhile, standing a bit apart, Daniel approached me and suddenly asked, Hey, do you perhaps not remember me? I couldn't help but reflexively tilt my head at his unexpected question. Do you really not remember me? Even as Daniel asked with scepticism, I couldn't recall any close friend named Daniel. His handsome face was memorable, but no specific memories came to mind. Seeing me desperately trying to recall, Daniel sighed slightly, unable to hide his disappointment. Well then, let's exchange contact information, and please tell Michael later. Actually, I forgot to exchange contacts with him. I was internally shocked by his sudden informal tone. We might have been close in the past, but I have no memory of it. Moreover, I don't recall ever being close with someone who would use such a rude tone. In my heart, I was swirling with questions like, who on earth is he? What kind of relationship did we have? Considering that Emily was also present, I decided that it was not appropriate to speak up or act out, so I kept silent. However, after we exchanged contact information, I decided to talk to him directly via text message to clear up my doubts. Before I could reach out to him, he started talking, saying, I'm surprised the girl who used to spend her time quietly in a corner of the classroom when we were in elementary school is now married before me. To tell you the truth, your face hasn't changed much since then, so I recognized you right away. I grew up in a town quite far from here, and during my elementary school days, I was often teased by many of my classmates. To escape those painful memories, I moved away with my family when I entered middle school. In the new city, I met a wonderful friend named Michael, and we gradually built a deep bond. Memories of elementary school are painful for me, and I would rather not recall them. I was a bit surprised by his words and asked, What are you talking about? I didn't want others to misunderstand the fact that I was in contact with Emily's fiance Daniel, so I explained that our message exchanges were conducted through Michael. As a result, we agreed that in the future, whenever Daniel and I needed to exchange information, Michael would be with us as much as possible, facilitating three-way communication. Of course, I didn't share the detailed background or reasons with Daniel. After I finished explaining the situation, Daniel smiled warmly and asked, By the way, do you remember being called Pua Girl back in elementary school? The term Pua Girl had a specific background. It was used to tease me by my classmates, derived from the newly learned word poor, as I was from a single-parent family. Although my family wasn't particularly struggling financially, there was a time when my mother was told by other mothers that it must be tough financially because you're a single parent. 
This rumor might have spread among the children and started the teasing. As a result, I decided to move to a new place to change my situation. This decision was also influenced by the fact that my mother was considering legal action for defamation against some moms who were spreading rumors like, they must be living a frugal life because they are a single parent family, probably even using cardboard boxes to prepare meals. Since I moved to my new home, I haven't heard the unpleasant nickname, Pua Girl, which used to be the cause of people teasing me. However, one day I was honestly surprised when a middle-aged man admitted he didn't even know the exact meaning of the word poor. I calmly told him, please be careful with your words. You are my sister-in-law's fiancé, and our relationship does not go beyond that. Please do not suddenly say meaningless things. After that, he did not send any more messages. Maybe he took my words seriously and realized that he should stop making rude remarks. However, watching this whole exchange by my side, Michael seemed to feel a strong sense of discomfort at the man's choice of words, and I could see his face cloud over rapidly. What on earth is that man thinking? He seems to have no understanding of the fact that the person he is dealing with is the sister-in-law of the woman he is about to marry. Moreover, he brings up the past from when you two were in elementary school and continues to interact with the same familiarity as back then. Isn't that just crazy? He said, showing his anger. Seeing Michael tremble with rage, I said, calm down, calm down, trying to soothe him. I was also a bit concerned, so I immediately contacted my mother and asked her to look for a class photo from my elementary school days. I asked her to check if there was a classmate named Daniel in it. Then my mother quickly found a boy named Daniel and said over the phone, wasn't this Daniel the main culprit who used to bully you the most? At that moment, a flood of memories that I had completely forgotten came back to me. The one who bullied me the most was, in fact, Daniel. Just to be sure, I had her send me a photo from my elementary school days. Looking at the photo, he had a much larger, chubby physique compared to the past. His appearance was completely different now, which is probably why I didn't realize that I knew him. After that, I decided to investigate the situation more thoroughly. During such investigations, a few months after our first meeting, I received a call from Emily. Sandra, we haven't received your RSVP for the wedding invitation yet. You and your brother are planning to attend, right? What wedding invitation? My husband and I were looking forward to receiving this invitation, but strangely, it never reached us. When I told her about it, Emily seemed surprised and said, I definitely sent it. Maybe there was some problem somewhere. Anyway, I will come and give it to you directly tomorrow, she said and responded with a very sincere attitude. The next day, Michael and I received the invitation directly from Emily, and we made sure to tell her that we would be attending. At that point, we had no idea what was waiting for us at the wedding venue and how much it would ripple through. No one could have predicted what would happen next. On the day of the wedding, Emily was in a pure white wedding dress, shining like an angel. I congratulated her on the beginning of her new life, tears in my eyes. However, at the same time, the groom Daniel instantly ruined our celebratory mood. I truly wished for Emily's happiness and for my own happiness as well. I wanted this wedding to be a complete success, but the moment he spoke, he pointed at me. Michael, Emily, and I were all surprised at that moment. Why are you here? I deliberately did not send an invitation, he said, looking thoroughly displeased. It seems like Daniel went out of his way to ensure that Michael and I did not receive an invitation. This woman grew up in a household with just her mother. When things get tough, she runs away. That must have led to temporary financial hardship and now she's found a man from a wealthy family, thinking she can live a carefree life. She's a dreamy woman who can't see reality, 
Daniel falsely accused me, despite not knowing anything about my past. Michael, sitting next to me, clenched his fist in anger. I gently told him to calm down. Daniel continued to make false accusations against me. I hold an important position at the well-known e-company. If I marry Emily, are you planning to use your position as my sister-in-law to take money from me? At his resolute statement, the groom's friends were shocked and started buzzing in excitement. They must be friends with the same narrow perspective as Daniel. Immediately, I approached a nearby staff member and instructed them to hand me the microphone. Wondering if he was expecting me to say something emotional and illogical, Daniel smirked triumphantly. I responded to him calmly. It's truly ridiculous that you, who can't even properly remember the face of the president at the top of your own company, dare to call yourself an elite. Think carefully. If you intend to sever ties with me, I'll be waiting in the president's office tomorrow. We'll proceed with the HR procedures. Having said that, I handed the microphone back to the staff and confidently returned to my seat with a calm demeanor. Michael stood up and headed toward the exit of the venue. Soon after, Emily also began to walk in the same direction. Noticing this, Daniel called out to her, Wait a minute. Why are you going that way too? I'm just trying to break things off with her. If that's the case, there shouldn't be any problems, right? As Daniel, still not fully understanding the situation, spoke to Emily, she gave him a cold look. You really don't know Sandra. She's the CEO of Tea Company. I respect and deeply admire my sister, Sandra. I can't forgive you for belittling her. I intend to break off this engagement right now. You've ruined such an important day in our lives. Be prepared. Shocked by Emily's stern words, Daniel was completely taken aback. Sandra decided to talk to the venue staff and take off her wedding dress. She informed the guests that the banquet would be ended and the wedding itself would be changed to a simple meal gathering. Taking a stance that such an action will never happen again, she pointed out that Daniel was the main cause of the engagement breakup, firmly blaming him. The ordeal was not over yet. The next day, as I had warned the previous day, I calmly waited for his arrival in the president's office. Next to me stood two large, muscular employees, ready to respond immediately if he tried to make a move during our conversation. He seemed to have overcome his internal struggle as he entered the president's office. His confidence soon became unstable, and he sat down in the chair, gradually showing a tense expression. His behavior of entering the room without permission and sitting down without any greeting seemed quite rude. At this point, it was clear that he did not understand the basic rules and manners within the company. No, no way. I can't believe that you are really the president. This is unbelievable. If you had done even a little bit of research, you would have found the president's information on our company's website. Didn't you have the time to check before coming here? Well, there were circumstances. He seemed to have come here without taking my words seriously, without investigating the truth. He probably thought I was joking or distorting facts. In front of all these guests, I told him, I am thinking of terminating the employment contract. What are you thinking? It's not fair to make an immediate decision just because of a slight misunderstanding. I will consult with the Labor Standards Inspection Office. Watching him try to carefully persuade me, I calmly took out a copy of the resume he had once submitted and placed it in front of him. You have falsified your educational background here, haven't you? And you've also pretended to have qualifications that you don't actually have and claim to have skills in Excel and video editing software that you don't possess. Are all these statements true? About that part. Falsifying information and false reporting are legitimate reasons for us to terminate our employment contract with an employee, you know, he showed a surprised expression at my direct statement. In fact, from the moment I first met him, 
I had a strange intuition about him. Afterwards, I thoroughly verified the facts. Generally, our company does not use headhunting methods. Even if we do a headhunt, the information is transferred to me, and I directly meet and interview the recommended candidates. However, I have no memory of having a deep conversation with Daniel directly. To be precise, he joined our company through the regular recruitment process for mid-career hires and started working as a regular employee. He called himself a person aiming for promotion and had claimed to be proficient in using software. When he joined the company, actually, since he has no skills in operating that software, the opportunity for promotion never came around. Previously, his self-evaluation was incredibly high, and feeling the contradiction in that, I thoroughly investigated his attitude for the next time. Even during work hours, he behaved lazily, basking in the feeling of belonging to T Company. For me, I had absolutely no intention of neglecting an employee with such a work attitude and tried to improve it. Now he has officially ended his engagement with Emily, and there is no special relationship between him and me. He continues to behave unpleasantly, and even as an adult repeats actions that make me uncomfortable. Therefore, I see no reason to be particularly generous towards him. I immediately told Daniel to leave the company. Since he had been with our organization for less than half a year, there was no need to consider severance pay or the handover of specific duties over such a short period. As an old friend, won't you help me out? He relied on me, saying this, but I calmly told him, I see no reason to continue our relationship any further and arrange for other staff to handle his immediate departure from the company. It seems he was seeking financial support from his father, but as a result of spreading outrageous rumors, that didn't happen. There is a past incident where my mother sued for defamation, and it seems Daniel's mother was the victim. My father paid the compensation for damages, so he has experienced paying compensation for defamation just once. Faced with his son Daniel in a similar situation, demanding compensation this time as well, my father probably felt he had reached his limit, cut off financial support, and completely disappeared from their lives. Afterwards, Daniel spent his days taking care of his elderly mother while being pursued for the payment of consolation money. Eventually, he disappeared as if taken away by people in all black clothing. And since then, no one knows his whereabouts. Someone who knows about his future might appear eventually, but I myself have no intention of actively finding out where he is. On one hand, Emily was initially deeply hurt when she found out that her fiancé, who she was about to marry, had such a background. Time heals all wounds, and about six months have passed. She has started to positively affirm it was really for the best that we didn't get married officially. Recently, her smile has returned, and she has even been able to participate in events to find a new partner in life. Seeing Emily living a brighter life again, Michael and I are truly relieved. In fact, it seems they are now actively 